I'm gonna show you everything you need to know to make your very own tactics in FM23. I'll take you through it step by step, and I guarantee that by the end of the video, you can make your very own tactics that will make my slightly more successful counterparts run in fear. The first step is to analyze your team, because a tactic is only as good as the ones who will be executing it. This first step is all about getting a feeling for your squad, as using what your specific team is good at is the key to any amazing tactic. Start by going to your squad screen and having a look at all the players at your disposal, making a mental note of what they're good at, what they're bad at, and all the roles and positions that they might be able to work in. Pay some extra attention to your best group of players, as those are the ones you'll probably want to build your tactic around. Next, to further extend your understanding of your team's capabilities, head over to the squad planner and on the reports, go to comparison. Each of the tabs on this screen shows you how your team stacks up against the rest of the league, giving you extra insight on your team's strengths and weaknesses. Oh, and be sure to filter out any of the plays that are irrelevant for this comparison. For example, you don't want to be looking at the goalkeeping stats of your strikers. And to round off this first step, have a look at your assistant report, which you can also find under reports in the squad planner screen. This shows you a breakdown of what your assistant manager thinks are the strengths and weaknesses of your team, and they may contain some things you might have missed in your own analysis, making it a valuable tool to complete your understanding of your team. Let's see this first step in action. Having a look at Southampton's current squad, this is what I found. The first thing I noticed is that they had quite a few decent centre-backs, nudging me towards the three centre-back system. While looking through all the players, I noticed that a lot of them had a lot of stamina, work rate and teamwork, giving me the idea of a high-tempo, high-pressing system. I also noticed that Orsic, one of the best players in the team, is really good at finishing, something I want to keep in mind when building the tactic. Finally, when looking at the comparisons for my team, I noticed that they weren't that great on the ball or even passing the ball, something that my assistant report and a long list of weaknesses seemed to confirm, so a dominating possession-based tactic was off the table. With all that in mind, we can start creating our very own tactic. The first thing you'll have to do is to pick a formation on which to build on. Make sure to choose a formation which suits your team and lets your best players play in the roles that they're best on. In my Southampton example, I'm using a 5-2-3 DM wide as I wanted to use a free centre-back system and I can use Orsic, one of my best attackers, in his preferred left wing position. The next step is to take the players that you've identified as your best players and put them in the roles and positions that you want to use them in, as those are the players that you want to build your tactic around. For Southampton, this will look something like this, where the inside forward on attack role will help Orsic's finishing shine. Following that, we're gonna fill in the rest of the players. The key here is to create a balance on three different aspects. Goal scoring threat, getting the ball from defense to attack, and keeping the whiff. Ideally, you want to have two or three players focused on scoring goals, two or three players focused on disruining the ball from the defense to the attack, and at least two players keeping the whiff. Now, do you absolutely have to hit all those boxes? No, not necessarily. For example, you can choose not to have two players keep the whiff and focus on a narrow system overloading the midfield. But that does require a stronger tactical mind and a very specific set of players that can actually perform in such a tactic. So unless you're 100% sure about it, a balanced tactic is the way to go. Now we've got all our players in their positions, we can fill out the team instructions based on what we determined our team would be best at. For Southampton, we saw that we shouldn't focus on possession-based football, and we were a hard-working team. So I want to play high-tempo football. I want to counter-press and get the ball up the field quickly by focusing on the counter-attack. And I want to press a lot, and I want to press high up the field. The final thing you want to check before switching your focus to your defensive play is where your plays will end up when your team is attacking, based on your current roles and positions. Let's switch over to the tactical drawing board to have a look. First off, you can divide the pitch in 5 zones by drawing lines from the edges of the penalty area and the penalty arc to the halfway line. Then you can draw your formation on the field, as those are the starting positions for your players. Next, move your players into the areas where their roles are telling them to go, so you can get an idea for how your team will look when they're attacking your opponent's half. Now you can check two things. Are all the zones on the field being attacked by at least one of your players? And are no two players getting in each other's way? In the Southampton example, this already seems to be a pretty well set up tactic, but it does require the inside forwards to always cut inside and never linger on the wings, so I've decided to switch them over to attacking midfielders to put some extra and constant pressure on the central areas. Now that we've got a solid attacking setup, let's switch our focus to developing our defensive play. But before we get to that, I would love to know if you think this video has been helpful up until now, so let me know by tapping that like button. Now onto the defensive play. 
we can start by looking at our rest defense. The term rest defense means how your team is set up immediately after losing the ball and when they have to switch from attack to defend. Since we already have a drawing of how our team is positioned when we're attacking, we can have another look at it from a different perspective and look at how our team is set up when we lose the ball. You want to check that you don't leave any big holes on the field for your opposition to exploit and if you want to counter press that you have enough players in the right positions to immediately counter press once you lose the ball. Back in the Southampton example, I would have loved to have used the amazing work ethic of James Ward-Prowse and maybe use him as a Segundo Volante. But if I did and he moved further up the field, we could potentially leave a giant hole in the midfield, really hampering our rest defense. So I decided to keep him back a bit more and focus on his playmaking abilities by using him as a deep line playmaker. Once we figured out our rest defense, we can then review how our team was set up once we fully transitioned into our defensive play. We can move back to our tactical drawing board and move our players to the positions where they'll be in our defensive play. From this point, you can redraw the five zones on the field again and analyze how your team is positioned across the field when defending. Make sure to check that for every zone there's at least one or two players responsible for defending that zone, and if they have any cover if they happen to make a mistake, in the Southampton example, I think we're especially solid with this compact defense, but we might be a bit weak against opponents who exploit the wings. It's not something that I want to change now, but it is something that I'm going to keep in mind. So if we're struggling defensively with the whiff in the game, I could perhaps move one of the attacking midfielders out to the wing so they can help us defend the whiff in our defensive play. Now that we've developed our attacking and our defensive play, we've got the foundation for a great tactic. But the key ingredient that takes it from great to amazing, and something that a lot of players skip out on, is evolving the tactic over time. It's near impossible to create a tactic that works in every situation all the time, let alone create it in your first attempt. What you want to do is tweak your tactic during the season to fit your current situation. Don't be afraid to make a small change here and there, even for one game. A great example is if your opponent's danger man is their attacking midfielder. You might want to drop one of your players back into the defensive midfield position if you're not already using one. But your tweaking shouldn't be limited to just one game. Keep analyzing how your team is performing and where you could possibly improve. No one makes a perfect tactic in one attempt, but everyone can do it if they keep improving their current tactic. And if your tactic is still failing you and you just don't know why, check out this video where I go through some of the most common tactical mistakes and how you can fix them. I'll see you on the next video.